we are blah 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 nobody sees what doesn't go on these videos y'all but da 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 Nobody wanna be a nigga. Uh. All right, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to our crew, but my returnees. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome my fives. I have a treat for you today. We are going to be talking to my black Womanity panel and this panel was all about bringing black women of different sexualities and identities together to talk about how we can unify the community i can honestly say as a black woman raised in the church in the south i've always had these very polarizing views on sexuality and gender assignment and i wanted to open myself up to really testing those views because behind my belief systems are people you know it's easy to have all that smoke for somebody when you're not actually dealing with that person face to face so I gathered my panelists together so that we could go to work on seeing how we can impact the community how we can develop relationships with each other that will help dispel some of the bias so that we can get to work Speaking of work, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my bold black beauties to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Do, 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 do. Welcome back to the Wireless Woman. Now, <laughs> so I would like to welcome you all to our Black Woman Entity panel. This episode of the Wireless Woman is going to be geared all around us as Black women exploring sexuality and femininity and see how we can create a more perfect union so i have with me today my original co-host tanya divine who is more like a special guest but she is my actual co-host how are you tan i'm doing well how are you how are you doing? good and you're right i am special you know i'm special yeah you, you already you, know <laughs> you are a special guest but welcome yep you know i have missed you i know i missed you too but she had to start with I know though. <laughs> blackness. That is sounds of blackness right there. You know it. You know it. Now Tanya and I have with us though an actual special guest. Jaquel, it is so great to have you with us. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And I hope this I hope you will become family and not just a guest because I would love to have your perspective on a myriad of issues. Of course, definitely. So to the business that we have come to today, though, we will be exploring sexuality. So I did want to put together a panel of people who kind of were around the spectrum of having different experiences. So I myself am a cis straight black female. Like I hate that I have to qualify all of my womanhood into all of these different categories. We do have a panelist that couldn't make it with us today who was who excuse me who is a transgender woman however we're going to continue with our panel and make sure that we do our best to be as inclusive as possible so Jaquel, oh. tell us a little bit more about yourself in reference to the panel 
Um, so I would be considered a black <laughs> lesbian. Um, but I don't really like titles. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just a black woman that love women. Black women. Black women. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we have to be black women who love black women. But if you don't mind, just because I don't like to speak for anyone else, just, you know, just you can feel free to bring us along kind of your journey and your evolution. Because if I do understand correctly, you weren't always just you weren't always a lesbian. That's correct. That's correct. So I, um, I said a straight a uh, black female that was in high school though so that was uh, many a moons ago um and i uh, would say around 17 i came out um as bi and 19 i just cut them off <laughs> <laughs> and i just only dated with Mrs. Mm-hmm. so uh, i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you my little story okay so I have never had any same sex sexual experiences, right? And here's the thing, like, even Drake got this on Girls Like Girls, you know, and so yeah. I know a lot of people who have had these experiences. I don't think even, you know, even as a straight black female, I don't think it's wrong to explore sexuality because some people are just in an assignment that kind of came to them. You know what I mean? But I had a friend in college. And Tan knows this story. Okay, I had a friend. <laughs> Child, we have to be careful over here. All the, I was about to all the tea. She's going to spill all the like, tea. Okay, so I had a friend and she went off to college, right? And she came back and like, I happened to see her out. And she was with her girlfriend and everything like that, like hugged up, booed up. And I was like, it's interesting because you know we had grown up together her mom was a pastor and so you know we had grown up a certain way so I was kind of like this is interesting but then after that she went through a period of she got married to a man you know really wanting that approval of her family and so me and her sat down and had a conversation she said to me listen I'm not even sure I'm gay I don't even know she said I just know that sex with a woman is better than sex with a man period that is entirely true. <laughs> she was like period she was like listen and she told me this and i'm one of those people when somebody give me a precautionary tale baby i believe it she said mm-hmm. if you don't want to be gay just don't have sex with women yeah listen <laughs> hello and she was that. like <laughs> she and was like that. don't try it don't try it she said because if you try it you're gonna be hooked on it just you know so I have kind of like stuck with that like I don't see you know I don't see lesbian women as being like this you know because she told me she's like baby unless this thing what you want this thing ain't what you want so when somebody say something like that to me I believe it I don't need I don't need to test the like maybe she don't maybe I can no when people told me not to do drugs I ain't do them when people told me not to sleep with women I just didn't do it like I just I trust that (laughs) you know I really do well, now, so for me, it's kind of the same. Well, no, it, it's uh, okay. So when I was littler, like I'm like littler, you know, you play house or whatever. Um, I was always the daddy. <laughs> I want to be mama. I had to be the daddy, and so I couldn't play with boys because you know they didn't want me to be the daddy. So I had to be the girl. <laughs> um, and even like growing up, I always had an attraction to to women. It was never a time where I didn't have one. Um, but I will say I was, I was raised in the church as well. Um, so it was just when I was considered, considered being bisexual, it was because I was like, okay, well, maybe I will end up with a man because that's what I'm, that's what I'm supposed to do. And because I feel like that's what I was supposed to do. I just kept doing it. And the more I did it, I was like, hmm. I don't like this. It's, mm-hmm. it's just something about it. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like you touching me. I don't want to be around you. Um, but when I got my very first girlfriend, you was comfortable. And then that's it. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, I tell you what, I am a or considered a straight female, a straight black woman as well. Now, with that being said, 
You have tested okay. waters. I didn't I'm, think you was gonna say I'm that out loud. Different there. from 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 Debian. I have to touch the stove to see if it's hot. See how hot it is. That's just me. <laughs> Tell me it's hot. I'm like, I know it's hot, but how hot is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm that type of person or that type of. I've always been that type of child. Um, that bitch hot though. It's hot. It's hot. It's, it's hot. hot. That's what I heard. Oh and it's, see, it's hot. It's hot, but it ain't hot enough to totally cancel out my attraction desire or attraction mm. for a man. Mm. Yeah, and see, I know for me. Like, I just don't have any concept of it. And I, like, like I said, as I've gotten older and my views on things have um, evolved, you know, I don't think it's the most unhealthy thing, even though it's kind of weird. I think it's really different. I mean, since we are on a black woman in the T panel, I think that's a really, I think sexuality is so much more fluid for women than it yeah. is for men. Cause, cause, yeah, yeah I would say that. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah but with, I do think with, we... with us, I think it's more acceptable to test the waters. You know what I'm saying? It's actually considered sexy to some men. You know what I'm really? saying? Like on some shit. You know, that's their dream to be involved with that situation. You know, with the two women and the da 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 da. That's every almost every straight man's dream. You know, mm. but for men. It's like no coming back from. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But see, I I think it's it's, it's all predisposed uh, like notions because I've heard them say that same thing that you know that same sex thing. Like once you get out there in them waters, you're mm -hmm. dealing with a more pleasurable experience. But that mm -hmm. brings me to one of the questions that I did want to ask you as a black woman. Let's be honest. Like let's be real as fuck. Okay. Real AF, I I feel like black women get fetishized more than any other type of woman. I know they out there telling everybody that white women, but let's just be real. They, yeah. they let's be real. We we know. So yeah. as a lesbian woman, have you experienced like large amounts of fetishism from men? Like, do you feel like they discount you? Do you feel like they discount your relationship because it's same sex? Yeah. They, they heavily discredit, and um, my girlfriend is um, considered masculine. So any girl I've ever dated is considered mas masculine. So I, I've always dated studs. So um, with me dating studs, it's, um, it's always counted out. They'll be like, men will be like, oh, well, what is it that she can do for you that I can't do for you? Yeah. And, um, it's just a lot of different questions or they'll say the favorite question that I always get is if you like women, why won't you date a woman that looks like a woman? And why would you want to date a, man, a woman that looks like a man? And me, I'm like, I don't think that they look like me because they have the same exact features that I have. So um, it, it's very, it's very heavily discredited. I wish I could show y'all my inbox mm. of people that just men, it doesn't really, black men specifically are very nasty and negative. Uh, when I tell them that I'm not interested, that it's, uh, oh, it's because you a fat bitch and you are this and all that. And it's really just, I tell them like, I'm, I'm into women. Like, I like the same thing you like. And after that, it just goes downhill. The conversation goes downhill. Either it's very aggressive as in, You've never been with the right man. Yeah, or hyper masculine. It's very or it's very aggressive in you like their feelings be hurt, being hurt from being turned down. So it's yeah. never really a safe space either way because at this point it's just like I have to not respond because I'm either harassed about oh let's all get together and we can you know whatever mm -hmm. whatever um, or it's like I said, I'm a, I'm a fat bitch and all these other crazy things and it's like she don't want to go there with me. I get you. And I think too, um, like me, I had, um, and I hope for the sake of this video, I can find it. My feminism is mother. 
is a motherfucker. Wish a motherfucker would, might smile at you, but not for you. Will grab Trump by his pussy, even though he's all asshole. Gets cat call and called dog by women who hate how masculine my feminism is. Don't make women loyal. It don't make them stable or stay. Gets cheated on and called too feminine for having feelings about it. My feminism is exhausted of your expectations of being judged, of being denied, and explaining its own femininity. But she taught, she was a stud. Like, I don't like using that term because I don't know how it's going to make somebody feel inside. But yeah. she was the type of woman that you would look at as being more masculine, which is weird because they call women like me masculine, too. So it's like, yeah, me too. Clearly, you're <laughs> clear. So like at this point, it's just like anything that don't have white skin is masculine. I think that's I, I think that's the takeaway here. Okay. Yeah, that's because they have the damsel in distress syndrome, but yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Have that. Yeah, so I mean and I I'm not saying it like because I to me this poem that I was telling you about she talked about her femininity and to me mm-hmm. I I have been coached on divine femininity and you know this lady approached me and she was like you know you 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 really need to get in touch with your femininity I was like oh you got the wrong one because I'm, I'm not with the shit um you know like I don't consider myself feminine and it took being educated on what femininity was to understand. She said, no, 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 you have great feminine energy. She was like, you know, she taught me over the course of my divine feminine energy journey that being feminine is about embracing your womanhood unapologetically Mm -hmm. being Mm -hmm. fiercely female and not being concerned at all about what a man defines femininity as because that ultimately (laughs) undercuts femininity to let a man define what it is. And men like so many different things. Mm -hmm. Women like so many different things that it, it takes your individual individuality away trying to conform to some sort of standard of what femininity Mm -hmm. is. Cause most of the time, and here's that intersectionality piece our our gender roles have been given to us by white society yep mm-hmm. do you feel like in a lesbian relationship and tan you can you know chime in but do you feel like gender roles within lesbian relationships like that that plays a part or or taking that out of the equation gives you a little bit more of a level playing field um I would say yes and no. And um, to me, like, there's no specific role we have to have in our relationship um, because we're both women. I don't have to worry about um, which what society would consider um, a masculine role or a feminine role because, again, we're both we're both women. Mm-hmm. Now, in the house. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do like take out the trash. I don't take out the trash. I don't cut no grass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't do those things. But it's just, it's a preference. I know how to do it. Mm-hmm. I was taught how to do those things. Mm-hmm. I just prefer not to do it because those are things that I feel like I, I shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. So if that answers your question, I'll say yes or no. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. And I think too, the really, I think that is really the move nowadays if we as black people are going to start to work together in communities i'm a big person on getting rid of gender roles getting rid of you know and not necessarily in the sense that we don't respect and honor the differences amongst each other but it's just that you got women that build better shells than men do like that shouldn't be something that's considered masculine that's true um like for example um my partner she's doing age back so that's something that's not considered normal in society um, because a woman in HVAC, a black woman nonetheless, but a woman in HVAC isn't really heard of. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, I feel like it's just so many things that society puts on us as women at, um, to tell us what we can and can't do um, that we just hold, hold on to it. We were supposed to only be housewives, and now we got to help do housewives and work. 
But see, work. but see, the crazy thing about that is black women have never, ever, ever, ever been housewives. Never have our men had a place in the patriarchy to where they could even provide that type of situation. Because I don't care what nobody say. Most white men can't provide that for their wives either. Like right. even that those mad men that that we see uh, characterized and stuff in TV shows and movies. Mm-hmm. Mo- that's like 50%. The other 50% of white women worked <laughs> too. You know, I think it's a classism that kind of comes in, but black women from the plantation, we were brought over here in chains with our, with our, uh, dominated, subjugated men to be slaves right alongside them. And if you've ever watched Sojourner's Truth, Sojourner Truth's Ain't I a Woman, she talked about being able to pick more cotton than men. Cause let's be honest, they've been talking about how niggas was lazy from the plantation. Like, look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into bonds and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man when I could get it. That desire to be successful and to be competitive has always, in my opinion, been more, um, has been relegated more to black women than it has been to black men. And that's why you see that dynamic of them saying like, well, y'all got so much further than us because y'all was women we got further than y'all in spite of being women yeah like make it make sense as you all was talking about the role of the black woman and and like our mobility or us being able to organize and you know like you said we have never been the housewives but Jaquel, have you seen an increase in women like exploring <laughs> like the lesbian or alternative lifestyles, I guess you could say, um, as a result of like the breakdown in our community or the breakdown between black men and black women? Um, I won't say because of the breakdown between black men and black women. Um I just think that women are naturally curious and we like to see if we like it and we like it, we like it. If we don't, we don't. Um, I don't really think that I, I haven't had anybody in my personal life that has started dating women because they couldn't find a man or it, they were having men issues or yeah. whatever the case may be. Most of my friends that have explored that life just was trying to see if they liked it and some liked it and some didn't so um well, but as far as mm-hmm. go ahead. no you go ahead go ahead but as far as um because of the divide i would say no not in my personal life so okay. I would say no. okay so well, you ain't got no gay for pay around you then <laughs> no <laughs> so since since you're saying jaquel that's not your experience do you think, however, um, how do you how do you identify yourself? Do you identify yourself as black first, a woman first, or a lesbian first? Like, which one of those communities do you feel like encompasses your identity? Um, definitely black first, and it's on it's because it, when you see me, you know that I'm I'm black. Um, and if you don't, if you see me, you see that I'm black. Of course, you see that I'm a woman. But um, it's so much, you know, different things going on as far as gender is concerned that I, you know, can't say woman first. Um, but definitely black first. And as far as lesbian, if I don't tell you, you won't know. Mm-hmm. I can't say that um, in that aspect. But definitely, I definitely would say I'm black first. Okay. Okay. I feel you. I feel that. And that's what I was out. Well, yeah, black, a black woman. That's, yeah. that's, that's just it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We just black women. But um, going off of what I've asked before, as far as that, do you think, or is there some type of feeling within like the lesbian community, like when you got people that's trying it out? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do y'all, do y'all like, be like, man, stop playing. You know what I'm saying? Like. Um, so I will say yes. I have, um, 
definitely encountered some girls that were just like curious just to see. And I'm not that I'm not that. I yeah, yeah, I'm, um, yeah. I go through that with white men. I don't want to be your inaugural yeah, white man. I'm not. Black yeah, woman. I'm not gonna just um, mess with you because you just you just want to see or like do some experimenting. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Now I will say. Um, do you feel people- though? Do you feel though that there's like like okay? Because I liken sexuality to every other, you know. Do you feel like those people that are just there to try it out? Because some people be on a cloud chase. They like yeah. the the notoriety, you know, that they get from being in that particular community. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. we saw that with Rachel Dolezal, where it's like, I'm black. You know, it's like, where do they do that at? So, yeah. do you feel like, I feel like people that are that are black for the sake of, you know, I feel like that kind of dilutes the community. Do you feel like that as far as like the lesbian community, like there are some people in there this? Yeah, definitely. I feel like, um, so a lot of the, uh, I would say mask presenting lesbians, they go after straight women. Um, when it's plenty of lesbians that would, you know, love a relationship, but they don't mm-hmm. go after um, lesbian women, they'll go after straight women that they had three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine kids yeah. and then cry when when they go back to me. And it's like, well, you knew what you signed up for. Exactly. exactly. So it's like, yeah, it definitely, um, it definitely dilutes the pool. Um, but needless to say, it's going to keep happening. So it's like, what can I really say? Yeah. yeah. My, one, my, my one self, what am I going to say? So. Yeah, I think you definitely have people that come in and out. Like, you know, I'm I'm doing a podcast with my daughter about being biracial because you got some that come in and out of blackness when it, you know, suits them to be blacker than at other times. And so I think when it comes to matter of sexuality, especially when you're in an environment of people becoming so much more um, open about open. their sexuality. Yeah. yeah. And being able to say, this is who I am. This is what I am. Because to me... I, I, you know, I have had to separate my womanhood from my blackness. Like, yeah, I want to be a black woman and I want to be all of the things that a that a black woman is. But I feel like we're under assault from a whole lot of male privilege, whether it's yeah. transgender women, which, you know, I have hope that we have our panelists to really speak to that, whether it's black men, like womanhood is just something that's completely under attack. So it makes me feel like I need to identify more with women just because there's more safety and solidarity in that community. So you being a black lesbian woman, do you feel like there's more solidarity for you in the um, LGBTQIA community because they seem to be making so much more progress than black people. Um, no, there's, there's no space. There's no comfortable space for a black lesbian woman anywhere, whether it's in the black community, uh, the woman community or the LGBTQ community. And I say that because um, yes, the LGBT are one band, one sound, but damn. Was... Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound. If you think about it, who's at the forefront of, of the rally? You don't see a lot of us or a lot of women that look like me. Um, you will see a lot of white women. Um, yeah, white yeah. Like I think, them. I think the LGBT side of interrupt you. I think the LGBTQIA plus community has made so much more progress because it does have white men in it. That yeah. white male patriarchy privilege gonna, there. that's gonna move that that ship along faster yeah. than a whole nation full of united black people. Yes, yeah. and I will definitely say yeah. I don't know if you, if you guys have ever watched um, Pose that that um, show Pose. <laughs> But you can see on there, they talk about how um, she went into the the white bar and they was like, you don't belong here. Well, mm-hmm. What are you doing here? So that is something that happens in general. It's not it, just because I'm I'm a lesbian. It's not they're not going to open me. With, they're not going to welcome me with an arm. Uh-huh. They're not going to say, oh, you're one of us. No, they're going to see me and they're going to be like, mm. 
you, yeah, you might be a lesbian, but you're also still black. Mm. And that's the same thing you could say for like the women's movement. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing that happened during the women's movement. Like, you know, we were there when it was convenient. They wanted us to be a part of it. But then it's like, yeah, but you black. You know yeah, they wanted us in it for numbers. Okay, so yep. so following that whole train of conversation, what do we do then as black women if we are ostracized from the feminist movement? Like I hate it when I'll say something about feminism and men don't seem to understand that black feminism is not white feminism. It's not the same. It's not the it same. Can't they be. think that we're yeah, they think that when you say feminism that you're saying it's like women are better than men and we are so top tier and all this other stuff. But really, to me, I love black men, but I, but I am very much pro black woman before I'm a black before mm -hmm. black men because mm -hmm. I don't feel safe with black men, which mm -hmm. becomes like a phenomenon to me because I don't like white people and I'm afraid of black men. Right. And I feel more safe with black women because. You know, even we, we look out for each other. We don't have to even know each other to want to look out for each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. So yeah, even the even the way. divisions amongst the black female population though aren't violent. Like when exactly. you look at divisions in the black male population, you know, we got whole generations of men that have been decimated. I know this is off topic, but that's why a lot of people look at me a certain way when I say, you know, I feel like black women should be able to divest simply because when we look at the amount of gang violence and, you know, incarceration in our population, it's, it's not going to be enough <laughs> men. Like the only option we got as black women is other women or mm -hmm. to seriously open up our options. But going back to the original point, I honestly wonder that like, and that's the purpose of this black woman entity panel, this wireless woman channel is how do we as women come together and now create a network and create a community where we can support each other. Because like you said, the feminist movement doesn't really have doesn't really address the issues of the black woman because ours are different. You know, black movements, I don't feel like black movements, I feel like are wrapped up in a lot of misogyny and patriarchy yep. nowadays. Mm hmm. You know, and then, you know, to me, there kind of is no place for the black woman to have value to any community that's larger than just us. Mm -hmm. And to, to piggyback off of what you said with you saying nowadays, that's not true. It's always been like that. If Facts. you think about it, like um, Martin Luther King wasn't wasn't marching for black women. It was marching for black men to have equal Pro rights to white men. Yes, is. he said our our little black boys and our little black girls. He really didn't care. And and um I'm just saying that to say like see, I'm gonna tell you, I I'm not a Martin Luther King person. I'm Me a, neither. I'm a Listen, I'm a Listen, Magneto yeah. was right. Can I look, can I interrupt? Jaquel. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it. By any means necessary. You are now Devian's new best friend. Okay? You're my best friend. All right. You are now her new best friend. Because I. She's been in this for a long, long, long I think Martin time. Luther King. Like, I think Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is the biggest coon that has ever <laughs> existed. In the, in this cool. country. And because um, he because the only reason why he wanted us to be integrated and be one is really because he was out there to put the white women. Exactly. But, <laughs> he, he, just, he, just, he just wanted what all black men want. Listen. Proximity to white men. just said that the other day. And did you delete it out? Did you delete it? Uh, yeah, I did. It was in a she video. It was in a video it. that's coming on tonight. Yeah, I did. The only reason deleted why I deleted it out was for time, though, because I was talking about how it was all about getting proximity to white women. And my thing is, I think when it comes to desirability politics all the way across the board, and I want to ask you about that, too, in the lesbian community, if you're seeing some of those same like dynamics being mirrored when it comes to desirability, like I honestly, 
on everything I love on my mama and my hood. And I said it in so many videos. I give every, I would give every black man a pork chop sandwich and two white women if I could. Like if that's what you into and that's what you want and you willing to destroy the confidence of your black women and destroy your own black community to hold on to whiteness, just go, just, just go, mm -hmm. just leave. But I wonder if you're seeing that because I know like Raven Simone has a white wife and Wanda Sykes has a white wife. Are you seeing some of those same like desirability politics playing out in the black female lesbian community? No, that's rich people problems. So um, as a middle class black lesbian, all of my counterparts that are black lesbian are Black lesbian with black women. I don't even see them with women that are not. Um, they're just they're just women that are with women that are of of color. Like I haven't seen not one. Well, it was one, but that was a, a many moves ago. But um, other than that, I've only seen one of one of my black lesbian counterparts that a white girl, and that didn't last. It, it didn't last. <laughs> Needless to say, because what like we don't have nothing in common. But when I said it's rich people problems, Raven Simone went and got a white girl, um, because at that point in time, well, at now they're on the same playing field. And honestly and truly, Raven Simone probably has Way more better. leeway yeah. than she do. And that's what that's what all all I'm not gonna say all most successful black people do the same thing. They get rich and then they go and switch. Yeah, we, we've seen it time and time again. Okay, so, <laughs> um, okay, because you know, I do, I do wonder that, and I do think that a lot of you know, white luxury, white capitalism, like you know, social media and all that stuff has even the most impoverished black people still feeling like they're white. Do you see that element of like white privilege? Kind of, it's not white privilege that I'm talking about, but like a gay kind of like privilege do you see that because i feel like i feel like the lgbtqia plus community is a much more protected class than a black class so do you do you see those distinctions within that community because one of the biggest things that i take issue with is i can still be a nigga I can still be a black bitch and all these different things. But if I say dyke, if I say something like that, it's like you're getting canceled. You are done. You are finished forever. So do you think that has like endowed that community with a certain amount of privilege? Um, I would definitely say yes. And that again goes back to me saying that the white gays make it like no this is something you can't say or we're going to cancel you and cancel culture is very real so um i feel like if it wasn't for the white gays being in such an uproar about any and everything they still want to say nigga you can't say that you can't call them out their name but they can still call you a nigga and as soon as you call them out their name then it's oh well you're being um Intolerant. Oh, yeah, like yeah. You're, you're being ignorant and you're being yeah. this, but it's like, okay, but you was just calling me a nigga. Yeah. But now I called you something. And it's a problem. Your feelings hurt. Yeah. So yeah. I just, I feel like, um, very privileged, but it's only because, again, the white community that's inside of the LGBT community has been together. So that they're, they're on one playing field. Now, I will say, like, um, with you saying, like, that's actually something that black masculine women in new york has taken and they're using it they're saying mm -hmm. it so it's not considered a slur like it used to be um so the northerners northern black lesbian women have started using dyke more down here it's more stood but it just really depends on what part okay. you, you yeah i mean i would never say those things anyway but it just yeah. it makes me feel some type of way because you know, as a black woman, as a person who has lived in this country without any privilege for the longest, like, I don't know why black men don't understand they have male privilege. They have it. I don't, I don't, I don't care if you can, if you can walk down the street and not be concerned with your safety, you have male privilege. 
period. You know, like I know y'all think the police gonna do something to y'all, but y'all should have done something about that. That still don't have nothing to do with us as black women because they'll do something to y'all and us. So, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and so. then turn around, we trying to be protected from y'all, then turn around and still have to worry about. The, the police and you that don't make sense <laughs> exactly because we you don't want us calling the police on you <laughs> and exactly. then we don't want to call the police because we scared they might kill you kill but you exactly. probably go but kill us, kill us. <laughs> yeah. It's just a vicious cycle of stupidity. It really, it really, it really, really is. So for me to be watching the strides that that particular community is making, I think it's like how black men look at black women and get jealous. Like, I ain't jealous of it, but I do be kind of like feeling so type of way a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, but again, like even with um with gays being able to get married mm-hmm. and it was such a uproar, you know, across across America. Um, that wasn't something that we were marching for. We wasn't, you know, you didn't really see um a lot of black faces in the crowd. There was mm-hmm. a lot of white um male that were a lot of white men that were just wanting to have equal rights as, as with their with their brothers, you know what I'm saying? So it's not it's a, it's a lot of one band one sound within the LGBT community. One band, one sound. But it's not one band one sound when it comes to all races. Right. It stops it up. Right. It, it's one band one sound, mm-hmm. nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you still so you still feel that intersectionality of being a black woman and you don't feel like being in that community has alleviated right. any of that. None, not at all. It doesn't it and it and it doesn't give me any kind of privilege from being a lesbian. Mm. It's not anything that I'm benefiting from being a lesbian. If anything, I'm more harassed because I am considered a lesbian. So it's it's more harassment from men because it's um it's over sexualized mm. and then it's um harassment from women because either they're curious about it and they want to know what's going on or some women get their pennies in a bunch and they think that you're trying to mess with them and it's like girl you're not even all that mm. you're, not, mm-hmm. you're not even the the, the chips or the bag <laughs> oh, you're not even what you're talking you about. ain't the chips or the dip Okay, so oh. here <laughs> here's my question um and it's it's the question that I've been <laughs> wanting to ask okay we're not done we're not done here okay. like this is clearly a conversation that has to be continue a, yeah a continuous conversation especially as our communities evolve and we and we see how we can be of benefit to each other because clearly yeah. like you said there's there's no country for old men you know there's no country for black mm-hmm. women so we have to mm-hmm. figure this out and Ten knows I'm a prophet, so I have it on good authority that we got to figure it out soon. Like that is the um, urgency that people see with me of why I'm out here really being like, okay, who who's coming with me like Jerry Maguire style? Because we we really got to figure this out and soon. Mm-hmm. So, but my question: Have you? And, and this is just a curiosity question. Like this, this some kink shit. Don't don't judge me. Um, have you guys she been? Kinky. Okay. I am not. Go ahead. <laughs> tell you, you like, edit that tell out. you like, tell you like, <laughs> bitch. No, I believe it. Is. Tell you like, this bitch that had two husbands, she be having, yeah. So clearly, I'm on to something. But anyway, <laughs> men be messing up your pH balance though. Like, they, women do too. Ooh, they really do not be sensitive to that. You know what? That's good to know though. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they be out here. They be out here on some dirty dick shit too. Okay, mm-hmm. so, they need some hand. They need to put some sanitizer on that thing. So they use it again. Yeah. So you you just got to bring your own tool set, evidently. So okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then you know I didn't know how stratified y'all community was because you got some that's like no penetration. You got some that's like I. It's, oh, like, I'm no penetration. Oh. I don't like it. I don't like it. Mm-mm. It gives it give me very, very much man vibes. Don't, don't touch me. Mm. Well, nah, let me not say don't touch me. But, um, oh yeah, I'm not a penetration kind of person. Yeah. So okay, yeah, okay. and so then I guess that creates to because you got to be with people that respect and understand that, and that also you know are you know okay, cool. 
Cool. So here's my question. Are you running across like static? Because I feel like the most hypersensitive out this whole group is transgender men. Like, do you feel like there's a lot of, because I feel like black womanhood is under attack, just period, from black men, period. But even black men who want to be black women, who literally want to embody the image of black womanhood, don't seem to have no respect for it either. And that's that's the weirdest thing. That's like me wanting to be white, but hating white people. It's just weird. Mm-hmm. Like it's two, it's two incompatible things. So are you running across one? Are you running across issues in the lesbian community with these same transgender men, women, and do are you seeing any of them like in the dating population? Because gender and sexuality are not mutually exclusive. So you do have some tra- transgender women who are also lesbians. Lesbian. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's a good ass question, ain't it? It is. Yeah. Um, so I would say I don't personally know um, a lot of trans. I know one, and uh, I don't really know them personally. So it's not. Um, I know them, but I don't know them like that in, in a personal um, aspect. Now, as far as anything that I see on social media, I do follow some transgender women um, on social media. And if you don't, if if they, if you say something that they don't like, they get very nasty. They get very nasty. But that that is a quality that I have found that's in black men. Yeah, um, I think that's and, male privilege too. We love Flame yeah. Monroe over here. We love Flame. We follow yeah, Flame I love Monroe. Flame. Yeah, because he's still willing to, he sees being a transgender woman as being a a hybrid between being a man and being a woman. Like, he understands he's not a woman. He understands, he's like, underneath all this, I'm still a real ass nigga. Like, oh, it's a real nigga up under this wig. I just want you to know. (laughs) You know, he still holds on to his blackness, you know, and he still holds on to respecting and honoring black women as being the model Mm -hmm. for what he wants to be as a man instead of it just being like, well, we're better women than y'all because we, you know, it's just, it gets weird. Yeah, and and I'm Unfortunately, a lot of them don't. Um, and it's it's like it's still where they are. They feel disrespected. If they feel disrespected, they just get very disrespectful. And I just think that ultimately, you're you are um, a woman in your mind and how you want to and, and, and the way you want to be. But if you haven't had any kind of surgery or you know. I can't even say surgery. If you weren't born a woman to me, you're just not, you're not that. I, I'm not one of those. I'm going to respect you for, you know, whatever you want me to call you. I'll call you that. But as for me, um, I just feel like if you're not a born a woman, then I'm, you're not a woman. I, and I just don't want to, I, I say that to say, like, I feel like that because a lot of the stuff that I see from trans women is a lot of black women bashing, a, a lot of black women bashing. And I can't identify or come to rescue for you when you don't come to rescue for me. So if you're going to bash me, I'm not going to respect you in the aspect that you're wanting me to respect you in. Yeah. But see, that's, that's where I take issue with so much of it because it's like you said it's just so much male privilege wrapped up in it and f- being a black woman someone who's considered hyper masculine um I don't know how a group of, of, of emasculated men can even define if they can't define for themselves what masculinity mm-hmm. is I don't know how they manage to label me with it but Okay, so that's why it's difficult when you're dealing with people who are modeling, or so they say, their whole behavior off of how we act, our mannerisms, all these different things, but then have so many disparaging things to say. And if you think about it, look at all the comedy skits. Um, Tyler Perry literally got rich off of playing a ignorant black woman. Absolutely. Um, all the comedy skits. A violent, with- a violent, ignorant masculine black woman black woman yeah um even with like tiktoks you'll see they'll be like with the with the nails they'll be like girl mm, girl mm, girl and that's like that's what y'all say that we are but y'all emulate that so much and then when we don't be that it's it's like it's shocking to them mm-hmm. like oh so you you have some type of class and some type of poise about yourself i do because i'm not 
gonna neck roll you and argue you down and yeah. oh child, I'm not about to do all this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna Say, say what I need to say. Yeah, and and so. and I think for me too to take away from this whole conversation is that like we as women are going to have to um just take a step back from all of these community identity politics. You know, I wanted to have this conversation with you and other people in this community. When you're looking at anything from the outside in, it's easy to make judgments about people, the experience that people are having. And I gotta be honest, like it's like black people looking at white people from the outside. Like it just look like y'all just, you're together and then saying, you know. And so it's like, if we're still experiencing, you know, this type of, these type of issues within any community, Community that we find ourselves you know like I said about intersectionality then it just seems to be like we need to create our own lane yeah, you know exactly. we're influential enough to run all this shit for everybody to want to be like us so then why is it that we have to pander to what everybody else you know yeah, everybody else's things. movements yeah exactly and then yeah. we don't own anything and that's our biggest thing because again going back to Martin he integrated. That was the worst thing possible because we lost our, and then it, it's like this. Okay. And I understand what people say, but let's say you building the Lego house. Every time you build up your Lego house, somebody come by and kick that bitch over. You build it up again. And then you build it up, you get hype. Somebody come back and kick it over again. You know what I'm saying? Like how many times are you going to say keep rebuilding it before you say, you know what, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? And it mm -hmm. seems like we didn't get to the you know what, fuck it stage. Like, oh, okay. Right, but so see, we as black women are right. building at a deficit because we're building, we're in a patriarchy. Did anybody that say that yeah. ain't the case, I, I just... What's on your dollar bills? Like, what? Exactly. <laughs> how do you? <laughs> what's on your quarters, nickels, yeah. and dimes? Like, make it make yeah. sense to me. Um, they it ain't no. It's like a Susan B. Anthony, like two dollar. I don't know, something like that. I don't know. I ain't seen them Harriet Tubman twenty dollar bills. They say coming. So I we live one. Right. I ain't seen not. I ain't even seen nobody else talk about it no more. Especially since they sent yep. them billions of dollars to the Ukraine. I doubt they. I exactly. doubt that's even on the docket. But my point is, we live in this patriarchy. We know it. It's just true. If black men don't feel like they participating in white patriarchy, sound like that's a conversation they need to have amongst themselves. Maybe they need to gather, mm -hmm. get together, and create some sort of male delegation so that they can, you know, evenly divide what they fit, whatever. But. Everything you said is a failure on the part of our men to protect yeah. what has been built. So that's mm -hmm. where I'm saying we as black women, like for all the masculinity they swear we embody, it's like we have to we have to approach building our community totally different than a white woman would and a Hispanic mm -hmm. woman would because we don't have the builders. Like when you were talking about your girlfriend working at HVAC, like, thank you, because when we start looking at building our community and we have to look at skilled laborers and tradesmen and, you know, people who are able to actually build infrastructure, when we start looking at child rearing in single female households, like even if I wanted to say black men are the greatest men on the planet and they're awesome and amazing and wonderful. And because see, for me, I, I draw a conclusion between these two things. Like it's, you see that in the LGBTQ community where it's like, we got to be delicate with y'all. We can't say if, it, you know so a lot of people feel that pressure to be like I can't say the wrong thing around them like I'm on thin ice I'm walking on eggshells and so it's like I feel that same pressure with with black men it's like even if I said they the greatest 70 up from 70 percent almost 80 percent of black children are being raised in single parent households and these are mm -hmm. women that are waiting on a man to come and show up and just be a second income in that household. Cause when that man show up, ain't no guarantee you getting a second income out of that, you know, but at least maybe somebody that could be there with the kids while you go out and work, just any of that stuff. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying, how can we as women now look at the daunting task that we have? Because like you said, we got to build something for ourselves. I don't think people mm -hmm. are paying attention to what's going on out here, but when them black people went to go get on that train in the Ukraine that we just spent all them billions of dollars sending money to, then white folks was like, yeah, no, we, you, Ukrainians only. Like, how you know these people not from the Ukraine? Just because exactly. they don't care. Exactly. 
Yeah, they, they don't, don't care. care. But my point is, when we're here and they divvying out, uh, you know, because I think black people, because they get stimulus checks, thinks that the government is thinking about them too because they citizens or something like that. But yeah. when we start looking at scarcity and scarce resources in this country, like I disagree with you, Tan, when you said black women don't own anything. Black women own everything that black people own. Yeah, we're the yeah. ones that they have the most home ownership. We're the ones that have the most degrees. We're the ones that are the most upwardly mobile. That electric car company that's in the hands of a black woman. We the only other black uh, company because you know BT uh, that black man so he is. Um, mm -hmm. Tyler Perry has his own production company, but Oprah yeah. was the first black person to, to have, have her own, her own production network. company and network. Right. So and it's still going. And it it's is. still going. I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's holding on. I mean, I be watching Ready to Love. I don't support. Yeah. I don't either, cause them shows be desperate as hell. Have y'all seen that Marry Me or whatever it is? Mm -mm, I don't. I don't support Oprah because she don't. She don't support black women. Are you a black woman that don't support black women? That's true. She, makes, she, she got a whole a school over there in Africa. Yeah, she makes a. a and she, a and she from Chicago. Yeah. She makes yeah. a mockery out of black people. I don't, I don't support her. She so, does. Right, so I don't but. Know about no shows. She got. Right, but see, that's my point. It goes back to community building. Because let's be honest, any black woman that is building something that she wants to see be protected and have longevity is going to need to have a white man involved. Like, I'm not saying yeah. it's right or wrong. I am not. <laughs> on the side of that. My video that's coming out tonight, you're going to see that on my video. I said, listen. I'm kind of Anakin Skywalker. I can't promise y'all I'm going to hold out on this black ship. <laughs> if somebody don't come with some resources soon, baby, I don't. Because, I... you know, Goldman Sachs uh, has an initiative to make black female billionaires. Harvard just finished a yep. study that talked about disparity in the black communities. And, and they've reserved $100 million. All these, yep, yeah. all these prestigious uh, places are now trying to hone in on um, the destitute in the black community. But honestly, who is that going to benefit? First of all, it's nothing but a money laundering operation because every dollar they give us is going right to Jeff Bezos. Yeah. I mean, I, everybody that get a stimulus check, everybody that get $1 from the, the black dollar only lasts about six hours within our community. So without black men to build infrastructure and really all they seem to be concerned about is how much non-black um pots they can stir in it without or, or how we can how, how we can submit babies yeah act like feature and go out here and make all these babies with all these different black women and then sit up and say they toxic. Um, that, the, that that yeah that they're toxic and that we're the issue yeah yeah we whatever it is that them. they own we absolutely should have chose better and it wouldn't have been them. So my whole thing <laughs> of it is, is that, you know, that's why I'm saying, how can we now create, and this is, you know, a question for, you know, our next panel discussion, and hopefully we can continue to continue this conversation and add those layers that need to be there. Because, you know, people say that to me all the time. They're like, well, you know, it's just talk. It's just talk. And I do agree. There needs to be some action, but the actions of a community can't change until the language of that community changes. You know, we saw right. how black people went from guys to niggas, not from niggas to guys, yeah. but from guys to niggas. We saw our community get pulled down with, with media, with, with simply just changing the black male image. We have, we're dealing with the fallout of all of that. When black men went from being pastors to pimps, went from being prophets to pushers in a community you know the whole degradation that we see of the black community has been on them i know they want to hear that well what have y'all done what what did what did black women do y'all was the y'all no baby all that crack that got pushed in the community because that's all jay-z rap about like all that crack that got pushed in the community y'all put that's all biggie smiles rap about y'all put it in your community so if black women wasn't shit mm -hmm. you made them that period point blank yeah. Y'all was the ones that was out pimping and pushing and, and capitalizing off y'all community. That's why I don't have no respect for Jay-Z because to me, he's everything that we should despise in a black man. Everything. I don't care. And then people like, well, he he's cheating on Beyonce. Like he's, he's on everything that make a black man not be nothing in my eyes. That's just my opinion. Yeah. 
But to me, because the capitalists are now the ones with the money in our community, we can never look back to them, especially as no authority figures. They they don't even want to be looked up to by the community no more. So now it just becomes a matter of, okay, what can we as black women do to now protect the infrastructure we are trying to build? Um, I personally feel like, again, like I was saying with the one band, one sound, we have to get on one accord. And until we can get on one accord as black women, we won't never have Mm -hmm. a successful Mm -hmm. infrastructure amongst ourselves. I agree. Because, yeah, you know, you can, we can all disagree with, um, different things, but it's all about the approach and the disagreement. And unfortunately, I love black women, and like I said, I do feel more safe with a black woman than I do with a black man, but let's be honest, we also are very catty and very nasty towards each other as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, at the end of the day, you my sister. But see, I still feel like, and that's why I wanted to have this conversation with you as a representative of your community, and hopefully, like I said, it can be a part of a larger thing. I'm microchasm, macrochasm, but... That's why I said I feel like we need to start here and having those conversations because some of those things that like religious leaders have put over us and that was men, that was them telling us, Mm -hmm. you know, hey, you know, if you're same sex relationships, you go in the hill. But meanwhile, Mm -hmm. they got some little boy in their office in the back when they get done. So even the cattiness between black women is coming out of the scarcity of black men and them competing with each other for black men because I can promise yeah. you if black women were not concerned about getting some dusty, dirty, reused, recycled black pain, I honestly yeah. think at least fifty percent of our issues with each other would go away. Yeah. And that's true. And it's it's very unfortunate again that we have to even be competing. Well not we because I don't um I don't fit in that category. But y'all have to compete um for for black men even when i was um that's the masculine energy that's the competition right there that's where the masculine energy coming from because think about it all of the black men that black men don't cheat but all the black men that have been caught up in situations where they were cheating the woman went after the other woman baby let's let's keep it a man and even my girlfriend tell you i've already told her if i if i ever catch you out here doing something. I ain't going after her. I'm going after you because mm-hmm. you're the problem. I'm not the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I feel like if we could see each other for who we are um, yeah. and not for who they tell us that we are, it would yeah. be a lot, a lot yeah. different. Yeah. Even if we could see each other for, for how how we are. I tell myself every day that I love myself and I'm beautiful because that's how that's how I see myself. Mm-hmm. I see myself as beautiful. Can't nobody tear me down and tell me any different. Um, and until black women see each other as beautiful black mm-hmm. women and see each other as our sister and not competition, then we will never be yeah. successful. We have I almost, to see each other like that. I almost blacked out when you said black men. Don't you? I was like, oh, oh, I felt lightheaded. <laughs> but... <laughs> You're absolutely right. But I think, like you said, the biggest issue is, at the end of the day, identity politics. You know what I'm saying? If I could just be a good black woman and be eligible for a man on the basis of my goodness, on the basis of my skills, like if it wasn't, I've got to be better than someone else Mm -hmm. to be considered good. Because you got to remember that type of oppressive mentality is being passed down from white supremacy. Yeah, mm-hmm. because when we was black people, we was compete. We we've always been in that competition for scarce resources. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it can only be two black people in the office. So that third black person, you know, we about to band together and say they did something, or or you know, mm-hmm. I got to be the best because I don't want to, you know. So I think all of that stuff now. I think that our black men have become white supremacists, and the only option that we as black women have now is is that we got to turn it. First of all, we don't love ourselves because a lot of them have brought us up to believe that we are not lovable and it came out of the self-hatred that they had for themselves you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like the dude that was cussing me out about girls not liking him in middle school. He was like, yeah, and they oh, used yeah. To, girls didn't like me in middle school. And then I said, boys didn't like me in middle school. They said I was dark, too dark skin and I was a African booty scratcher. I was like, but I don't blame young black boys for saying those things to me. I blame white supremacy because it was about mm-hmm. my proximity to whiteness. They didn't know I played sports. I spoke foreign languages. I was smart in school and had good grades. I could cook. I could, that was not, they weren't concerned about my goodness as a woman. They were concerned about my proximity to whiteness. And that's where the hatred was coming from. So I can't even turn now, turn that hatred. I can't even internalize that hatred to the point where I hate them now for it. You see what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. they would, the same place that they speaking out of, if I turn and hate them for it, I'm going to be in that same bag with them. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I think a lot of black men think I hate black men. I don't. I love y'all enough to tell you the truth. You yeah. know what I mean? It takes love and, and somebody. And a lot of them don't, can't handle the truth. Yeah, and that's, a lot of them have never been loved. So they think that being lied to is love. And that's exactly. why what they be telling us they love us while they lying to us. Yeah. yeah, that's why, girl. I love you. That's why I couldn't tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I lied to them. So. Yeah, I lied to them. What, I love you because I told you the truth. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, that's why I'm saying unwrapping those layers and giving black women a place where we can heal you know that's why i want to have those conversations so that i'm not talking to a another black woman ignorant of her experiences just because like because it's easy for me as a woman who's in relationships with men to feel like oh you got it different oh you got it easier but you were really and i appreciate that jaquel you were careful to say like it ain't no cakewalk over here either you know what i'm saying it ain't it's really not because honestly um it's not um it's not a lot of oh what am I what are, how do I wanna say this? It's it's a lot of black lesbian, but that that goes back to me saying I like masculine women. So because I like masculine women, the women that I like either they want a, a, a woman that that them been with a man and they already got kids established so they can come into a situation and play step daddy. Um or we got black masculine women that just don't want to be with me because I'm fat. Um, or we have black lesbian masculine women that just want to be with straight women. They love the straight women. Yeah. It's still so that it's just, same black male pathology. Cause they yeah. want to turn her out. They mm-hmm. want to conquer her. And, and yeah. they want to conquer her and then cry about her going back to the yeah. black man that she want to be with. So yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. yeah, it's not it is not easy. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like I said, I really appreciate you, Tanya, um, and you, Jaquel, for just being a part of that black woman revolution. We see it sparking out all around us, but I do want to be a woman who is trying to figure out how we can be the voice of reason. It may create division, but that definitely isn't my intention. Uh, my intention is to get the largest population of people who have the best interests of not just black women in mind, but particularly, yes, black women, because until we are safe within our own communities, that trauma is going to be passed down through our children. Like all these black men out here calling black women toxic, but then you leave your kids at home with them. And of course the court's going, okay, well then go deal with white men. Then go deal with the courts, go deal with the lawmakers, go deal with the prison owners, like go deal with that. And we'll sit over here and make a community that's, that's going to be representative of what, we want to see, um, you know, be promoted and be projected. So I really appreciate having women like you um, to come on the panel and be able to discuss this, you know, and, and really see how like minded we are. So hopefully we could do this again soon sometimes. Yeah. I would we love can. I would love to have you back, Jaquel, especially to talk about black issues. <laughs> we talk about what? Can. Black issues. Black issues. Yeah, so we can get into this talk about because see, I'm a Malcolm X girl. Like you either you either Martin or you Malcolm, and I'm and by I'm, any means necessary. So, and bring about the freedom of these people by any means necessary. Anything that we can that we try, anything that we take and use and turn it into something positive, is they want it. 
Like, yeah. okay, y'all had nigga, we took nigga, put it, it, it now it's cool or whatever, now you want it back. No, no, nigga. Like, anything, anything that we do, anything that we have, like, and then, you know, come on yeah, man, because I'm getting ready to rant and some about some shit. Because I'm serious, like, it just... I don't, I don't get it. I just don't fucking get it. Like they they mad at us because we ain't. I mean, and, and we are. We fucking up. We have slacked, but we human beings. Everybody slacked. Mm-hmm. Like they have a population within them that don't do shit. Look at West Virginia and shit. That all that shit fucked up up and now. You know that Midwest shit. That damn. You know all that shit fucked up. Yeah, but you know my personal feelings. I'm like, I don't care. We as black people still, we we got to go hard. We got to be the best. We, we got to be the greatest. We shouldn't have to do that in, like, yeah, yeah. We shouldn't have to do that in reaction to what they got going on. But yeah. I just feel like it's inherently who we are, and I feel like it's been a whole lot of, um, just white inbreeding and stuff coming down through the ranks that's really making us be inferior like that like I think even a whole bunch of this yeah I think a whole bunch of this misogyny we see and stuff is George Washington's traits and shit coming out and stuff and people I I really feel like Thomas Jefferson and stuff like that Thomas Jefferson yeah he was spreading it wide and I really feel like cause, cause you know on my channel I talk a lot about how I feel like black people in America are not the same as Africans. We're just inherently different between the trauma and the, you know, rapes and all the white seed that we got in us. Cause you know, they be doing them 23 and me's and all that different stuff. And they don't want to tell black people how white they are. Yeah. You know, they don't want us to know that we ain't nothing but a couple of degrees from separation of being <laughs> fully, completely white people for the most part, most of us. Right. And they most don't want so. nobody to know that all them Indians that's out there, Native Americans, indigenous peoples that's out there on them reservations ain't nothing but their white kids because the real exactly. indigenous people look just like you, Jaquil, look just like exactly. us, baby. This, these exactly. are the indigenous people and if you're going to give somebody a reservation or some reparations or any of that it needed to be us just like they want to send 33 billion dollars to Ukraine for what for Y'all what pay us. and then what's crazy this, is that's what I'm saying the Ukraine, you don't even want to cancel out these student loans don't want to do that you and the do. Ukraine ain't even in NATO like they ain't even exactly. got nothing to do with us exactly yeah he don't know how to mind his business but they ain't no allies of us or none of that. No. Who don't know how to mind their business? Um, them people up in that up in that White House. And why I gotta be a White House? But that's a different that's that's just they just low key be like trying to put stuff in like we like subliminal stuff like, Oh yeah, you see this this great White House? Why I gotta be white? Why the house gotta be white. But you know what I say? I feel like until we until we are willing to die for our respect. Like it's sad because like niggas are die in their community over blocks they don't even own. But tell them oh, same the folks. Yeah, because in that video that I did that's coming on tonight, um uh, speaking of which, damn, we better hurry up. Um, I got that I got that video by Killer Mike and he's like all the all the he call him something else but he like all the bloods and the cribs and the kings and all this stuff when you niggas go unite and kill the police motherfuckers like my fathers and my cripples and my brothers and my brothers when you niggas go unite and kill the police motherfuckers <laughs> Or take over a jail, get them see your tail. Like for real, they don't. They like our men really don't want shit to do with having to conquer anything. They anything. conquer. Mm-hmm. They want to stay conquered. They swear now that the women conquer. And I said we we could be men if y'all women would let us. Like they so conquered now <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> they so cocky now that they identify with white men and shit. See, see what Johnny mm-hmm. Depp going through. That's what we be going through. And see, the system don't. The system is the same white niggas that y'all. But y'all identify with them now. Like I'm so confused because it's not black women that created the system that allows us to be victims. It was men <laughs> that created the system. They said because we're men and we're stronger than y'all, we're gonna protect y'all from us. Like they just weird. That's it. 
that's it that's all but at any rate um so like i said today you know the conversation focused on sexuality and femininity but i would love like i said to have you on to provide a different vantage point as well for other issues because we are doing everything that we can to build a community and hold on to what's left of blackness you know I really Definitely. feel like it's going to come down. I've been saying that the black woman is God. The black woman is the new black Messiah. Like it it's going to come down to us. She said that uh, you better get it together. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Every last get one of emotion. us. Every last one of us. It's like people running around calling themselves Christians. They just little Christ, you know, and if you haven't used that relationship to connect yourself to the deity of God, if that don't come with power, if that don't come mm-hmm. with wisdom, then what's the point? You can mm-hmm. sit in church eight, 80, 80 years, and if you ain't no more powerful as a result of that, uh, as a result of that conditioning, then I don't know what to tell you. So at this point, for me, it's about us reconditioning ourselves as black women to embrace the power that's going to end up coming to us anyway. Yeah. All right. Well, I love you, my sisters, and I can't wait until the next time that we're all together. Um, Jaquel, did you have anything that you wanted to like promote your like? Um, IG or anything like that or you know yes no um follow me on Facebook follow me on Instagram the girl in a martini because I do have my own martini business so awesome awesome well what is the name it's the girl in a martini the girl in a martini mm-hmm. okay definitely well I got to come over there and see what you own because I love mixology baby yeah. I don't I don't smoke nothing hey, or do nothing Mother's Listen. Day baby I'm ready Listen. Some infused banana pudding for Mother's Day. Nice. Cause I'm telling you, I don't smoke. I don't do no other drugs. So I like a nice drink. I, I like a drink yeah. to get me where I'm trying to go. All mm-hmm. right, Tan, did you have anything you wanted to say before we leave off? No, it's been a pleasure. It really has. And in this evening, with it you really two beautiful has. ladies. I appreciate it. Um all like always, as always, you know. As always. It's a- All right, thank you for sticking it out to the very end of this episode. If you like this discussion, you might want to check out this episode. And if you haven't, for whatever reason, subscribe. You can hit this link right here to do so. Until the next time, stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. You're not niggas.